Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and today is part two of the Demopolis murder that happened in 1934. Now I'll actually link the story down below in the description box and I'll also link part one in the little icon up here and also in the description box. So let's get started. As prominent a historian as Clement Eaton was, he got a few of the details wrong about the Frank Clement Smith murders. It is unlikely that Frank found Elsie being untrue to him at 4.30 in the morning at their own house, which in any case was not Bluff Hall, where his mother lived with one of Frank's brothers, Charles Singleton Smith, and Charles' wife and son. But the whispers of wild parties and amatory and faithfulness certainly provide us with some sort of motive for Frank's seemingly inexplicable act. In this light, one of the most extreme fury and despair. Elsie Smith was in fact twice divorced, points of interest, I think, whether or not one agrees with Clement Eaton's Demopolis gossips that the dread word divorcee deserves a connotation of dubious morals. Although she was born in Tampa, Florida, where her father was a railroad conductor, Elsie came of a prominent ag agrarian family on her father's side. The Hildreths, who resided at the wealthy planter village of Jefferson in Marengo County, Elsie's mother, Willie Jeffries Alston, died in 1910 when Elsie was but eight years old, and Elsie's father, Levon, maybe Lennon, uh, Hildreth, moved with his, with his family to Jacksonville, Florida. After the First World, World War, he relocated to Prescott, Arizona, where he worked as a railroad brakeman with his youngest son and Elsie. In 1920, Elsie, at age 18, was lodging separately from her father in Prescott with a druggist and his family. On December 15th of that same year, Elsie at her brother's house in Prescott married River, Riverside, California. Native George Battles Finch, 1896 to 1986. A little twist there. Elsie, whom the Prescott Weekly Journal Minor in a notice about the wedding described as a well-known and popular member of Prescott's younger set was dressed in a becoming brown satin gown with hat and shoes to match. Despite Elsie's pur purported popularity, only a few intimate friends were present at the ceremony. George Finch had been superintendent of the Arizona Bus Company, but the new couple was moving to his native Riverside, where George had accepted a position with the firm of J.W. Kemp Cadillac Dealers. About a year later, however, the same Prescott newspaper reported that Elsie was leaving the region and her man in the motor trade in order to reside with relations in Marengo County, which suggests that her marriage had quickly soared and that she had may found it advisable to get out of Dodge, so to speak. Yet nine years later, on December 2nd, 1929, Elsie was back in Arizona again, where she married Josiah Franklin Alkire, son of the respected pioneer Phoenix rancher and printing company owner Frank Tomlin Alkire. Although two year later, two years later, um, Elsie gave birth to the couple's son Frank, presumably named for his prominent paternal father, grandfather. Uh, the marriage foundered foundered in 1932, and a now twice divorced Elsie returned yet again to Marengo County, where the next year, quickly on the rebound, she fatefully wed Frank Clement Smith, a diminutive but dashing UA graduate and cashier in his late father's bank, who still lived with his parents at Elegant Bluff Hall. At UA, back in 1920, the school year book had portrayed the handsome though intense looking young Frank, a science major and member of the fraternity Alpha Tau Omega 
It was a dirty blonde and blue eyed heartbreaker. How so much good heartedness and pep can be combined in five feet, four inches has long been a wonder to us. A top surgeon at NSAT days, oh, student army training corps. Okay. Uh, the cause of many broken hearts and wistful glances. Yet appear, it appears to have been UA's adored Frank Smith, who in 1934 was mastered by his passion for his wayward wife and destroyed both himself and her along with her innocent children. In 2012, the Southern Jewish Historical Society sponsored an interview with Bert Julius Rosenbush, Jr., the so-called last Jew in Marengo County, whose father, Bert Julius Rosenbush, Sr., 1902-1975, owned a furniture store and funeral parlor in Demopolis at the time of the tragic extinguishing of the Frank Clement Smith family. The younger Bert, who was only five years old at the time of the slayings, his sister was just two, recalled that the terrible violent deaths of this attractive young family prompted his sensitive father, who was given the mortifying task of preparing the victims for burial. Uh, to abandon the funeral business for good and all. When my daddy went in, in the business, he went to Cincinnati and became a licensed embalmer. He practiced embalming along with running the furniture store with my grandmother until a tra tragic accident happened here in Demopolis. After that accident, it was just such a sad affair that my daddy decided to give it up. What was the accident? It was a man killed his family and they were about the same age as his family, so he just decided just to stick to furniture business and give up the undertaking part. Devious and devouring deaths seemed greedily to stalk the Smith family in the 1930s and 1940s, for during that time, Frank's older brother, Fenton Reed Smith, and sister-in-law likewise, were taken in unexpected ways. In 1923, Fenton married Alice Portman Bright, and later, the couple moved to the Panama Canal Zone, where he was employed with the Panama Railroad Company. Shortly before Andrew Reed Smith's own passing in 1932, at the age of 73, Alice Smith died from Spanish influenza in the Canal Zone at the Gorgas Hospital, named for the famed native Alabamian disease battler, William Crawford Gorgas. Nine years after his wife's untimely death, Fenton himself perished in the canal zone at the age of 48 when he drowned during a 1943 fishing excursion. During the 1940s, Clara Clement Smith, whom her son Frank had uh, made the beneficiary, beneficiary of his will in 1923, continued to reside at Bluff Hall with her surviving son, Frank's younger brother, Charles Singleton Smith, a bookkeeper with the Commercial National Bank and Charles' wife's son, Andrew Reed Smith II, though the upper floor of the mansion was converted into apartments. Clara sold the house in 1948 when she was 77 years old and moved to Long Beach on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, where she died in 1955. Two decades later, in 1967, Bluff Hall became a house museum maintained by Demopolis, and so it remains today, a lovely white columned southern mansion with an appalling family tragedy buried in its past. What does this all have to do with the world of vintage crime fiction with which this blog normally concerns itself? A decade after the murders, a crime writer may have drawn loosely on them in a detective novel set in a fictionalized Demopolis one, which I can now to announce soon we'll be hitting the press again okay you guys well that is it for that entire story and it only ended up being two parts but i do want to know what you all think about that story um i will link like i said below the blog that i read from and also the book that um is written based off these murders murder this murder that happened in demopolis but I hope you all enjoyed day two of October, so I can't wait for Halloween. I can't wait to bring you all out with me like this month. It's going to be the month for spirits, witches, vampires, 
ghouls, um, you know, all the creepy stuff. So let's all have fun, shall we? And have a peaceful and loving month. And I will see you all tomorrow with, well, you'll see. Love you all. See you all next time.